Hello. Um, first thing I want to say is very well done this week. We have tackled arguably two of the trickiest maths concepts uh, that we're going to have to uh, tackle. And you've done very, very well with it. Um, it's not been easy. And as I've said continuously this week, do not worry if your understanding wasn't solid this week. OK, sometimes we have to go through that one lesson where things are very confusing and eventually it will get easier. OK, so let's start with long division. So with long division, um, as you know, it's very similar to the normal division that we do. Um, but there is a difference that we need to make sure that we're um, very aware of. OK, so when we're solving a question like this, we set it up as we normally do. So we draw our bus stop inside the bus stop. We're going to put the number that we are dividing. So in this case, it's 2,544. And the number that we're dividing by goes outside. So 12 goes right here. OK, now, because this is a two digit number, we're not going to bother trying to pull it into the first digit. We're always going to look at the first two digits. OK, so how many times does 12 go into 25? Well, we need to do our 12 times table. So 12, 24, it goes twice. We landed on 24. Now, that number that we land on goes underneath right here. OK, and if you forget the number that you land on, just look over here, 12 times 2, 24. OK, so now this bit becomes column subtraction. So we do five subtract four is one, two subtract two gives us nothing. And then we bring the very next number down. We haven't divided this number yet. That number needs to come down. And at the bottom, we have 14. And then we carry on. How many times does 12 go into 14? And of course, it only goes in once. 12 times one is 12. So it goes in once. So we put one up here. 12 times one is 12. So 12 goes down here. And once again, we are going to do column subtraction. So four subtract two is two. One subtract one gives us zero. And then like last time, the next number needs to come down. So in this case, once again, it's a four. And at the bottom, we have 24. How many times does 12 go into 24? It goes twice. 12 times two is 24. And I have my answer, 212. Okay, um, so let's do another one, just so it's clear. This time we've got 358. So we draw our bus stop. Three, five, eight. And we're dividing it by 15. Okay, how many times does 15 go into 35? Well, 15 times two is 30. So it goes twice. We land on 30, so that goes underneath. And then this turns into column subtraction. Five subtract zero is five. Three subtract three is zero. And that eight comes down. So we've got a new number here, 58. How many times does 15 go into 58? 15, 30, 45. We have to stop there. So it goes in three times and we landed on 45. So that number needs to come down. We need to take it away from the 58. So eight subtract five is three. Five subtract four is one. Now we've got no more numbers to bring down and we've got 13 at the bottom. Okay, so this is our remainder. So the answer is 23 remainder 13. Okay. All right, final example. This is our last example. Um, so if you are still a little bit confused by it, that's okay, it is tricky, um, but watch very carefully. And if you're feeling confident, maybe pause the video right now and have a go at doing this one yourself to see if you get the answer correct. But if you're not, don't worry, just keep watching and hopefully this will clear things up. Okay, so 20 into 74, let's do the 20 times table, 20, 40, 60. It goes three times, 20 times three is 60. So that number comes down here. And this turns into column subtraction. Four subtract zero is still four. Seven subtract six is one. The next number comes down. So now at the bottom, we have one, four, three. 20 into 143. Let's do the 20 times table. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. It goes seven times. And 20 times seven is 140. So one, four, zero comes down here, turns into column subtraction. Three, subtract zero is three, four, take away four, zero, 
one, so it'd be one is zero. The next number comes down. So at the bottom here, we're going to have 36. And then 20 into 36 goes once, obviously. Um, and 20 times one is 20. So we're going to subtract six, uh, zero from six, which is six. Three subtract two is one. And we have a remainder of 16. There are no other numbers to come down. So that just is our remainder. Okay, so the answer is 371 remainder 16. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. Again, don't worry, we are going to look at this again next week for a little bit. Um, so if you are a bit confused, do not worry, and it will get clearer, but do give the questions at the end ago. But before we get there, let's talk about algebra. Now, this was very tough this week. It was very, very tough. And you have every right to be feeling confused, okay? But don't worry, okay? Because with a bit of practice, this is going to make more and more sense. So we've got a question here and it says, if three donuts and two cupcakes cost seven pounds and five donuts and three cupcakes cost 11 pounds, what is the price of one donut? What is the price of one cupcake? Now, the best way to work this out is we're gonna rewrite our question using algebra. In other words, we're gonna rewrite our question losing all the words and only including numbers and letters, okay? So the first part of the question says, if three donuts and two cupcakes cost seven pounds, we can rewrite that mathematically by saying 3D, three donuts, plus 2C, two cupcakes, is equal to seven pounds. This here means exactly the same thing as that, doesn't it? Three donuts and two cupcakes cost seven pounds. It means the same thing, okay? I'm gonna lose that pound sign actually. Um, I shouldn't have put that, I do apologize. You can put it, but I think it makes it look a bit more confusing. Um, now, the next part of, this, of the question, five donuts, so 5D, plus three cupcakes, 3C, equals 11. Okay, um, so this is a bit tough, okay? And this is probably the tougher one, toughest one we've done this week, um, but it's okay, all right? Do not worry if you don't get this next part, but just watch and hopefully, hopefully it makes sense, right? So we have got Ds, in each of these equations, and we've got Cs. Now we need to make one of the letters have the same number in front of it. So for example, it says 3D here and 5D here. We want them to have the same number in front of it, or we can do it with the Cs, okay? We want them to have the same number in front of it. We don't have to do it to both of them, only one of them, okay? And the best way to do it is to find a number that both of those numbers go into. So for example, if we look at the Cs, can you see, that two and three, they're both factors of six. They both go into six. So let's change both of these equations so that C has six written in front of it. How would we do that? How are we going to change two C into six C? Of course, we multiply it by three, but we must multiply the whole thing by three, okay? In other words, 3D times three is 90 plus two C times three is 6c equals 7 times 3 is 21. And now that we've re re rewritten the top bit, we can get rid of it. Now this one, we need to change that into 6c as well, don't we? How do we change 3c into 6c? We multiply it by 2. But once again, we have to multiply the whole thing by 2. Okay, so 5d times 2 is 10d. 3c times 2 is 6c. And 11 times two is 22. And now we can get rid of this one because we've rewritten it. And we're left with this, okay? Now what we're going to do is get the lesser amount. So in other words, 21 is less than 22. So we're gonna get this one and subtract it from this one, okay? So in other words, I'm gonna take 90 away from 10D. So 90 away from 10D, what would that leave us with? 10D take away 90 would be one. So we've got one D down here and now this is gone. 6C take away 6C. Obviously there's nothing left. Okay, so there's nothing left down here. You can get rid of that one. 21 take away from 22 would give us one. Oops. And get rid of that. And what we're left with on the screen says 1D equals one. In other words, one donut equals one pound. It literally tells us the answer. So one donut is one pound. Now that I know that one donut is one pound, have a look at the first part of the question. 
three donuts must cost three pounds. Now, if three donuts and two cupcakes cost seven pounds, two cupcakes must cost four pounds, mustn't they? Because three pounds plus four pounds is seven pounds. And if two cupcakes cost four pounds, one cupcake must cost two pounds. Very tricky, isn't it? It's very, very tricky, okay? Do not worry if it's still confusing. You are going to get there, okay? You've got to trust me. You're going to get there, okay? Um, all right, let's do another one. Now, if you're feeling brave enough, why don't you pause the video and have a go at doing this one? But if you feel like you are still a bit confused, which is absolutely normal, let's give this one a go together, okay? So first step, like, let's first just to read it. So if four apples and three bananas cost £3.80, and two apples and four bananas cost £4.40. What is the price of one apple? What is the price of one banana? So the first step is to rewrite it. So four apples becomes 4A, three bananas, 3B, costs 380. And two apples, 2A, four bananas, 4B, costs 440. All right, so we're going to make these well, we're going to make one of the letters have the same number in front of it. So either we choose the B's or we choose the A's. Now, it looks like it'll be easier to change the A's because 2A and 4A, or 2 and 4, both go into 4. 2 and 4, both factors are 4, right? So we don't have to change this one. This is already a 4, which means we only have to change the bottom one, okay? Now, to get 2A to become 4A, we need to multiply it by 2. But remember, we multiply the whole thing by 2. So 2a times 2 is 4a, 4b times 2 is 8b, and 440 times 2 is £8.80. Now we've rewritten it, we can get rid of that. And we are left with this. We take the lesser amount away from the greater amount. So 4a take away 4a gives us nothing. They're both gone, they cancel each other out. If we take 3b away from 8b, we're left with 5b. And if we take 380 away from 880, we're left with five pounds. Now this says five bananas equal five pounds. And if five bananas equal five pounds, that means one banana must equal one pound. Okay, so one banana equals one pound. Now, if one banana equals one pound, look at this question here. Two apples and four bananas cost 440. Now, if one banana is four pounds, that means four bananas must be four pounds. Okay, four bananas must be four pounds. Um, and altogether, two apples and four bananas cost 440. So two apples must cost 40 pence. And therefore, one apple must cost 20 pence. So we've got apple, 20 pence, banana, one pound. Okay. Let's move on to show you the questions this week. So on the left-hand side, we've got the long division questions. On the right-hand side, we've got the algebra questions. This is probably the trickiest homework you've ever had to do. All right. So if you're feeling confused, if you're feeling like you can't answer it, please do not worry. OK, it's completely normal to be confused after doing this just once. OK, if you can do it after just one after one week of doing it, that's incredible. But it's there's no expectation. All I expect is that you give it a go and you start to understand it a bit more. OK, thank you very much for watching. See you next week.